Hey guys, and welcome to another A-level physics revision video. In this video, we're going to be starting a new section looking at electromagnetic radiation and quantum phenomena. And in this video in particular, we're going to be covering the photoelectric effect. So let's get right to it. So what is the photoelectric effect? Well, say we've got a metal. So say we have a metal. Now, what the photoelectric effect is, is that if we shine some light on the surface of this metal, then the electrons, which are of course delocalized from the atomic nucleus, because remember we have, say we have our atom here, and we have our electrons which are all whizzing around, whizzing around the nucleus. Well, the inner metal, these electrons are actually not bound to the nucleus, they're actually free to move, um, which is of course why metals can conduct electricity. But these delocalized electrons can be liberated from the metal surface by this incident light coming in from here. Now, this can only sometimes happen, and you need to know the conditions as to when it can happen and when it can't happen. Now, the classical prediction is that, you know, light's a wave. So you expect that the energy of a wave, so if we draw out our wave right here, we expect the energy carried by the wave to be related to this distance right here, the amplitude of the wave. But the photoelectric effect showed that the energy of, that the energy of the incident radiation was actually related to not its amplitude, but its frequency. Now, if for a given metal, the radiation here, so this radiation here, if this radiation is below a certain frequency, then no electrons are emitted, no photoelectrons are emitted. We call the emitted ones photoelectrons. So if, if we just say, say we shine some, you know, ordinary, ordinary light right here, ordinary visible light, no photoelectrons are emitted. So you're sort of saying, well, what happens if we're gonna, if we increase the intensity? So say we have some, you know, more intense light being, um, being sent. What if we send this to the metal? Well, weirdly enough, this has no effect either, which you'd think is a bit weird, you know, because obviously the energy carried by a wave should be related to its intensity. Um, but that's obviously, that is not the observation. But what happens when we send in radiation which has a higher frequency. So if, what if we send in, say, ultraviolet radiation, what if this hits the metal? Well, turns out that only a little bit of ultraviolet radiation can be enough to liberate the electrons. It doesn't matter what the intensity is, even if you send in a really small amount of ultraviolet radiation, it's still enough to kick the electrons out. Whereas this large amount of of normal light, which doesn't have a high frequency, is not enough to kick the electrons out. And this is a very weird effect. And it was Einstein who actually solved this riddle, and he came up with the photon model of light. And what the photon model of light says, that instead of light being a wave, it's kind of like a wave. It has wave-like properties, hence, you know, hence why we thought it was a wave. Hence the double things like the double slit experiment and everything, you know, it, it like was originally a wave. But he said that these waves were what's called quantized, and they were quantized in discrete packets. You can sort of think of these as little little wave packets, if you like. So there's there's one wave packet that's for maybe like a yellow photon, and maybe we can have like another packet of wave. Maybe that's a green photon and maybe like, you know, moving up the spectrum, you can have a, a violet wave packet, and they're quantized, and the energy that's carried by one of these wave packets, Einstein showed, was given by E equals HF, where E is the energy carried by a photon, H is what's called Planck's constant, and Planck's constant has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. 
joule seconds, which if you look at it is a really tiny number. I mean, 10 to the minus 34 is pretty much unimaginably tiny. So the energy carried by one photon is, is, is very small. And F is the frequency of the radiation. And so the point is that this is actually the same frequency which we would think of in the, in the wave model. You know, frequency is of course the number of cycles per second, the number of times it passes a point per second. Um, that is the same frequency is related by related to the energy. And this relation here is a very important relation in physics and it's actually one of the fundamental relationships in quantum mechanics. You can also express this in terms of wavelength rather than frequency. Now of course you should remember that the frequency and wavelength are related by this equation right here. So that the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength for a given speed. And since all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed, then if you increase the frequency, then you decrease the wavelength. And that relation is given by this here. Um, so if we substitute that in, we find that E is HC over lambda. Where H is still Planck's constant, C is also a constant, it's the speed of light, so C here is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And lambda is the wavelength of the light. This relation shows that the energy carried by a photon is inversely proportional to its wavelength. So by modeling light as quantized photons, then you can basically think of the photoelectric effect as like a one-on-one -on -one particle interaction. So Say we have our photon here, which I'll draw draw like this. This is our quantized unit of, of energy, which is the photon. And we have our electron, which is in the metal surface right here. Here's our ne electron, negatively charged. Then you can think of it, of this photon having sort of a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, almost billiard ball-like interaction with, with, the, with the electron. So here it comes, it, can, it moves in, it transfers all its energy to this electron. It goes in the process, and this electron, depending on how much energy, either leaves the metal surface or would just sort of wiggle about a bit if it doesn't have enough energy. So the question is, how much energy does it need? What, what, what energy does the photon need to have in order to kick out the electron from the metal surface? Well, we said that there's a certain frequency, which is called the threshold frequency. And we said that any photons below this frequency would not have the ability to kick electrons out. Whereas any photons which are above this frequency do kick the electron out. Now, of course, we said earlier that E equals HF. So let's call this certain frequency, let's call it F naught. So this is a specific frequency that only depends on the metal. So we find that the minimum energy needed by the photon to kick the electron out would therefore be H times F naught, if F naught is this frequency. And we call this, we call this quantity the work function, and we give it the symbol phi. And the work function is the minimum energy needed for a photon to have in order for it to kick the electron out, in order to cause photoelectron emission. So we said that the energy of a photon is HF. Now, if HF is greater than phi, then we have photoelectron emission. Now, if HF is less than phi, then we have no photoelectron emission. So this is the condition which we need to have the photoelectric effect in order, in order for it to happen. So we know that if HF is greater than phi, then we will get photoelectron emission. But if HF is greater than phi, then there's gonna be a bit of leftover. There's gonna be some leftover energy. So say we have our photon coming in, transfers all of its energy to the electron, but it only really needs phi in order to get out of the metal. So what's it gonna do with this leftover energy? 
Well, this is just going to simply get transferred as kinetic energy. So we can actually write that HF, our incoming energy, equals phi, which is the energy needed to get out of the surface, plus this extra kinetic energy, which is of course given by half mv squared. And this is the maximum kinetic energy in which an electron can have after it leaves the photon surface. So if you wanted this photon to just kick the electron out of the surface, then you would only need phi amount of energy. However, if it's still gonna have some remaining kinetic energy, then you would need this extra term here. So this is a very important equation. This equation basically governs the photoelectric effect. Now a common misconception in the photoelectric effect is it's very easy to get confused between the maximum kinetic energy of electrons leaving the metal and the number of electrons leaving the metal. Now what this equation is saying is that photons transfer their energy to the electrons and they use up phi in order to leave the metal and they have a little bit of extra kinetic energy which is the last term in the equation. But the kinetic energy of the electrons is independent of the intensity and this is because they can only absorb one photon at a time. So there's no point in sending in you know, a, a big intensity if they don't have the frequency because it won't have any effect. This is the point of the photoelectric effect is that if you, if you send in anything that's less than the frequency, if the, if, if the electron, if the incident photons have energy less than phi, then nothing can happen. And it's because they can only absorb one photon at a time. But if you're sending in a higher intensity of photons, which is above the threshold, then what you'll find is that the number of electrons emitted is proportional to the intensity. But this only really applies if HF is greater than phi. If HF is less than phi, then you get no photoelectron emission. No amount of increasing the intensity will get any photoelectron emission. Doesn't matter what the intensity is. If HF is less than phi, then nothing will happen. But this relation here will hold if HF is greater than phi. If you shine in really intense ultraviolet light onto the metal surface, then you will get more electrons. However, the, the half mv squared, this will not change if you increase the intensity. However, the number, which is slightly different, will change if you increase the intensity. But the maximum kinetic energy is only dependent on the frequency. We can plot these results on a graph to show how increasing the frequency increases the kinetic energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot a graph of, so here are our axes right here, and we're going to plot a graph of the maximum kinetic energy, which I'm going to call Ek max. Note that this is just the same as half m v squared max. So we're going to plot a graph of kinetic energy along the y-axis against frequency along the x-axis. And so this is going to show how the kinetic energy depends on the frequency. So what do, what do we know? Well, we know that below a certain frequency, and we're going to call this f naught, below f naught we see absolutely no no kinetic energy, no photoelectron emission happens, therefore there's not going to be any kinetic energy from the electrons because they're still stuck in the metal. But after this we see a linear dependence, a linear dependence of the kinetic energy on frequency. So this, so this graph right here is a linear graph after this point here, after the threshold frequency. Now what we can do is we can plot backwards and if we plot backwards all the way down to here then we can find that this this point here, the intercept with the kinetic energy axis, this point here is minus the work function. 
And this makes sense because you need the work function amount of energy to get the electron out of the metal and then anything extra beyond that is going to be extra kinetic energy. So when the maximum kinetic energy is zero, this point here rather, when the maximum kinetic energy is zero, then the electron has just about got out of the metal but it has no extra kinetic energy. And this is what happens when we give it phi amount of energy. So this point here is minus phi. Um, the gradient of this graph is h, Planck's constant. And we know that the equation of a typical graph is y equals mx plus c. And this graph here has a very similar form. If we look at our equation that we had before and say that hf equals phi plus half m v squared max. If we simply rearrange this equation for half mv squared max, which is just the maximum kinetic energy, we find that we get this. And this has a very similar form to the y equals mx plus c. This is, of course, our y term right here. f is what we're measuring along the x-axis, so this is kind of like our x term. The gradient, which is m, uh, we can just simply see is Planck's constant h, so this is the gradient of the graph. And c, which is our y-axis intercept, is simply the work function, which is minus phi. So this equation shows that there's a linear dependence of the kinetic energy on the frequency. So there you go. That's the photoelectric effect.